So I've had several people ask me, what tools am I using to do like this electrical work or to wire up solar panels and the solar inverters, the batteries, all of that type of work. So I've, I've gathered up all my tools, or at least most of them, and I've got them laid out on the table here, and I thought we'd go over the basic set of tools you would need to do this. And I'll try to do my best to leave links to at least most of these items or some Amazon links down in the description below if you want to uh, look them up online. So we're going to start off with the basics, and the first thing you're going to need is some type of a wire stripper, and these are kind of a more of a multi-function tool because they do more than strip wire. So these here are going to strip wire from about 10 to 22 gauge and they also have little pliers on the end. They also have a set of cutters but this one also has six different threads of bolts and you can cut off the little small bolts and shorten them using this set of pliers or this set of strippers I should say and they also have where you can crimp uh, terminals as well. So when wire gets a little bigger than 10 gauge, you're going to need another tool to be able to cut it. So definitely when you get up to battery cables and some of that bigger stuff, you're going to need a set of wire cutters. I mean, these are, these are cable cutters. These are made for bigger wire. And then it's also handy to have just a pair of regular cutters as well. But my favorite set is this set of cutters, which is also a set of crimpers at the same time. It has a set to crimp insulated terminals and non-insulated terminals. This works good for around that 10 gauge wire range and you get way more leverage with these longer handles to be able to crimp those terminals. Now on this stripper right here, you're crimping right in this area. See how close your hand is to that? It's a lot harder to crimp terminals with one of these. This is definitely the way to go. And that's only gonna really work for like 10 gauge and smaller. And I also think everybody should have a set of needle nose pliers on hand, uh, preferably ones with a set of cutters in there, but you're always trying to reach or maybe hold something or a wire and try to fit it into a terminal down in a box and these come in super handy. And then lineman pliers can come in handy as well. So when it comes to crimping terminals onto wire, there's a few different types, so then you need a few different tools. So for solar, you definitely need to have an MC4 a crimp tool and this is from iCrimp. This used to be called iWIS is their old brand name. I've got several of their tools. Now the only thing I don't like about them is that everything on these are listed in metric. Um, so it's a little confusing on which one of these crimps to use because it's a metric measurement. But if you look at the wire, uh, a lot of the wire made in the United States will say the gauge and then in parentheses or somewhere on the wire it'll also say what it is in millimeters. So, I mean, it, you should be able to look at the wire, tell what the metric value is, and be able to line it up with the one that works in the crimping tool. But you do have to have this style crimper to put on those MC4 connectors that are on solar panel and all your solar panel wiring outside. You gotta have a set of these. So a lot of times when you're working with stranded wire and you're putting that in a terminal block, a lot of times you want to put on a pin connector and that just slides over the end and you crimp it on and it turns that stranded wire into more of a solid wire. So you need to have a pin um, crimp tool and that's what this is right here. I've got a couple different one of them but this is the one I like and the reason I like it is because this goes all the way down I think the six gauge wire. So I can do six gauge all the way up to like 20 gauge or 22 gauge or something like that. It has a wide range and I can put on those uh, pin crimps. And I think when you buy this one on Amazon, it comes with a variety of pin crimps that come with it. So a lot of times you're messing with wire that's maybe two gauge, four gauge, six gauge, something like that. To crimp on a terminal onto it, these other tools are not big enough. So then you need a bigger crimp tool. And that's what this is right here. Once again, this is from iCrimp. So the, the values are in metric, but I personally know that this is eight gauge and then it's six, four, and two. So I can crimp terminals on all those sizes of wire using this uh, crimping tool. And this is also, what do they call that? It's a, it's a crimp tool where it puts an indent into the middle of the crimp and it presses the middle in onto the wire. I do think that some of these like indention crimpers, I think they actually hold better as well. And then as you get to bigger wire than two gauge, now you're gonna need a bigger crimp tool. Now I'm not, I don't know if I'm real fond of this one, 
the way this works is it has six different dies in here and you can push on this and you can spin it. And you can spin to the die that you want. You just have to match up both sides and spin to the correct size of wire. So this is an eye crimp tool, but this one's actually engraved in English wire gauge, right? American wire gauge. So this is rated from six gauge all the way up to one aught to crimp. And this is one of those hexagonal crimpers. It just does like a, a compression crimp onto the, the terminal. And then from bigger than that, this is another compression crimp, does the hexagonal compression. And this is one aught through four aught on this crimper. So I can go all the way up to four aught battery cables using this. And you can see real quick, you know, when you have anywhere from, say you're wiring up some small communication wiring that's maybe 18 gauge, all the way up to like four aught cable, you, you have to have a wide range of tools to be able to work with all those sizes of wire. So another thing that's nice to have I uh, don't necessarily have to have it, but is the voltage rated screwdrivers. I've got a couple sets. This is a Milwaukee set. This is a Klein set. Um, they're slightly different. They both have a Phillips and a flat head, but the Klein set, it actually has a number two square drive. And a lot of the terminals inside of a breaker panel, like on the ground bar, a lot of times they'll have that number two square terminal, you know, drive on there that you can use. And I feel like this engages better than a, than the regular slotted screwdriver, so I like that. And this Milwaukee set I have over here has that, I don't know what they call it, an, an EXT or XTC or something like that terminal where it's a slotted and an angled square drive combined. And this screwdriver works with a lot of electrical terminals as well. So voltage rated screwdrivers aren't required, you know, if you make sure that everything is turned off before you work on it, but it is nice to have them because when you're working on something and you accidentally run the side of the screwdriver against something that you didn't realize was hot, you could cause an, an arc or you could accidentally get shocked. And it's just nice to have them on hand and to use them just in case of something that you, you weren't, you know, realize something was actually energized. So a lot of these inverters and stuff nowadays, they have these little terminal blocks where you have to push on them and then you put on, push the wire inside and then you release them. And a lot of those require tiny screwdrivers. A lot of times there's little dip switches you need to flip and it does help to have a set of like little micro screwdrivers. And I've got a set right here. This one is from WIA. I don't remember if these may be a German made company. WIA makes good products. And this is a, a set of six screwdrivers, three Phillips and three slotted here. And, and it's just a nice little micro set of screwdrivers to have on hand. So when you're working around electrical equipment, of course you wanna be safe and you're gonna do a lot of testing. So one thing to have on hand is one of these little voltage um, light sticks here. They're kind of like a tattletale meter. You can put them up there, they'll light up if there is voltage present. So these are kind of like a, an easy, quick way to check things um, but I wouldn't bet my life on one of these. They're just nice to be able to check, know whether you got voltage, they kind of give you a red flag if something lights up. So I think these are nice to have on hand. You can put them in your pocket. They're a lot easier to carry around than a multimeter. But you do need a good multimeter. And when you're working with solar, you need a DC amp meter. That's really what you're wanting to look for. And that's what this Klein meter is here. It has a clamp meter on the top but it can, it can read AC voltage or amperage and DC amperage as well. And that's what you're looking for. I got a fluke meter and here it is. And this fluke meter only reads AC amperage. So when I'm trying to read battery cables or the volt or the amperage from solar panels, this meter doesn't work. So this meter right here, it can read up to 400 amps of DC or AC amperage. And of course it does also read you know, AC and DC voltage. And of course it has an, an ohm meter. It checks your frequency. So you can see if you have the right, um, like 60 Hertz on your panel. And this one also has temperature. So I think you can get a temperature sensor to add to this where you can have a temperature probe. So when you're looking for a multimeter for the solar work, you really want one that can read AC and DC amperage on the, on the clamp meter. So that's what you're looking for. So recently I've had a lot of people ask me about what I'm using to torque all of the bolts and terminals in the panels. And I've got a few things to be able to, to, to torque terminals with. So this right here, this is a Craftsman torque driver set. 
and it's just like a little hex screwdriver here. And on this side, you have the, the torque setting, and then you can adjust it with this little cap here. So you just pop this cap up, and then you can turn it, and you can adjust it to the torque setting that you want. Now, one thing you do need to remember is when you're done with the torque, any type of torquing tool, you need to uh, release it. You need to take it back to zero before you store it. You don't want to store it um, under that stress because it's you got a spring or something in there that's being compressed. So this torque screwdriver is for 10 to 50 inch pounds, and it comes with a variety of bits to fit in it. So the other day I had a bolt to tighten down and it needed 60 inch pounds, which is actually more than what that screwdriver would do. So then I have a quarter inch torque driver. This is a quarter inch socket. And this one is from zero to 100 inch pounds, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. It's zero to like 150 inch pounds. So this is like the next step up and it just uses quarter inch sockets as well. And this is a Tecton uh, tool. I've got three Tecton torque wrenches, and um, I'm very happy with the quality of Tecton tools as well, and that's what this one is. Now, when you get to some of the bigger battery terminals, you're going to be into the foot pounds, and then that's where this one comes in. This is another Tecton torque wrench, and this is a 3 8 torque wrench, and it goes all the way up to 80 foot pounds, and I, I really don't see any terminals being higher than that. So this, this is the for those really big battery terminals, you would need a 3 8 torque wrench like this. Now a lot of those battery terminals, a lot of them are Allen heads, right? Hex keys, um, and some are metric, some are standard. So things that you would need is, I've got a set of metric Allen head sockets, and I have a set of standard um, Allen head or hex head sockets. and you have to have those to be able to use the torque wrench to tighten up the bolt. So those three torque tools will cover all the ranges from small terminals all the way up to your big battery terminals. So a lot of times when you're messing with these cabinets, you're running conduit and they, a lot of cabinets have knockouts already in them, but a lot of times it's a cabinet without a knockout or maybe the knockout's too small, you wanna make it bigger. So then you're gonna to have to you know, create your own knockout. You're gonna to have to drill your own out or you're gonna to have to punch it out. So this right here, this is the Harbor Freight Hydraulic Punch Set, and it comes with five dies, I think from three quarter inch all the way up to two inch, and you can knock out conduit holes with this. This probably leaves the cleanest cut uh, when you punch out a knockout. Th this is probably the best looking end result tool. So for drilling out a hole for a one inch or lower conduit, a lot of people like to use the step bits. Uh, to be able to just drill right through the box. These work great on these sheet metal boxes. And um, when you get bigger than that, you know, other people may use just like a hole saw to be able to punch out the hole for like a two inch conduit or inch and a half conduit. That's kind of your other choices besides the hydraulic punch. Now there is a, another choice that you can buy and this is a carbide hole saw and it has a little step here on the edge. So when you're drilling in, it only drills so far and it hits that edge and it stops. You can't accidentally take this drill bit and punch it deep into the box where you're getting into some of the electronics or something like that. These are real handy for electrical enclosures just because you're only going to go, the whole saw itself, maybe you go in like a half inch and then the tip will go in an inch and a quarter, but it's, it will limit you and you can't you know, completely go into the box real deep. And they are carbide. They work great for stainless steel boxes if you ever end up messing with one of those. And then on the center of the drill bit, there's actually a spring on here. So when it punches the metal out, the little hole uh, piece that's in the middle, it'll push that little scrap piece of metal back out of itself. And this is um, several, there's a several companies that do make these. But the, honestly, this one's from Harbor Freight. And Harbor Freight makes three sizes of these and they're sized specifically for conduit. One is sized for half inch, that's what this one is. There's one for three quarter and there's one for one inch conduit. But these are these carbide hole saws and these are very handy and nice to have. So I've got one more thing to show and it's not a tool, it's actually electrical tape. So when you're messing with this residential electrical boxes, you're gonna want four colors of tape. You got your black tape for your normal wrapping up anything with electrical tape. And then you have these colored ones to identify the types of wire. So red is gonna be 
line two or L2 on your panel, you have white tape so that you can identify the neutral. And what you typically do is you, you wrap the last couple inches of the wire with like white, white tape and that'll identify it as a neutral. And then you have green so that you can identify your ground wire. And electrical tape is one of those things where there's good tape and there's bad tape. And I highly recommend go to Lowe's, buy Scotch 33 electrical tape and buy the colored tape there at Lowe's, Scotch 33. I think that's the best electrical tape to buy. Some of these other name brands or other brands don't stick very well and they fall off later. So that's just my recommendation. So other than the tools that I got laid out here, there's one more that just popped in my mind is sometimes when you're, you're messing with solar equipment, you're, you're doing some networking as well, right? You've got commu com sorry, communication from the inverter to the battery and from battery to battery. And you may need to make up some type of ethernet cable, right? So there are uh, ethernet tools. I'll try to put one up here on the screen. Um, to be able to put on your own RJ45 connectors and make your own ethernet cables. So you can make custom cables if you need to. Um, that could be another tool that you would need. But I think that pretty much covers most of the stuff that you need to do the, the solar work. Now, most of this is just normal electrical tools. Um, the only real thing here that's specifically solar is probably you know, the crimping tool for the MC4 connectors. And, um, you know, the rest of this is all just used for regular electrical style work. So I'm sure I did probably forget a tool or two. And if you think of something that I, I missed that I should have included in this list, go ahead and, and put it down in the description down below. That way everybody can see it. But I'll do my best to try to link most of these tools in the description below. And uh, you guys can look them up and check them out. But I hope that helps. I've had tons of people ask me about this. So at least I'm trying to point out the stuff that I'm using. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.